Hello everyone, I am Torit Mato. You are watching the Drawing and Painting Learning Channel Art and Purulia. We have been talking of various capabilities of watercolor and various tricks to exploit them optimally. Today I will discuss on layering or glazing using watercolor. Watercolor, because of its transparency and unique effects, can be utilized to create vibrant paintings. One of the most popular method is layering or glazing, that is building a painting using various layers. Numerous layers can be applied over one existing layer once it is dry or almost dry. Effects on absolutely dry and slightly wet paper will be different. Glazes introduce a lot of depth in the painting. In this video, we will talk of the properties of watercolors that are important to know. Those are transparency, granulation and staining. Then we will talk of the glazing techniques and apply them on painting of a rosebud. Let's see the properties of paints which make them suitable or not so suitable for glazing. It's the transparency of a paint that determines it. Many manufacturers mention the transparency or opacity on the tube also. Granulation happens when very minute grains show up in certain paints after drying. These are not much effective for glazing, but they can be used for background very effectively since they produce exclusive effects. Some paints once applied cannot be removed totally. They will leave a stain on the paper. These are good for initial layers of glazing since they will not come off that easily accidentally. These are mostly the synthetic pigments such as quinacridones and thallos. Another thumb rule is that the granulating paints are generally non-staining. Now we will carry out a simple exercise to see the properties of transparency in various paints. We will paint these in thin layers over a black strip. We will use gamboz hue, lemon yellow, yellow ochre, crimson lake, scarlet lake, prussian blue, cobalt blue, viridian hue, sap green, burnt sienna and white. We see here that some paints are more transparent than others, but most of the earth colors are less transparent. However, in case you want to reduce the transparency, reduce the amount of water. The transparent colors are most suitable for glazing. So for glazing effects, you should start with the lightest shade and slowly build with lesser transparent and lastly the most opaque paint if required. One important aspect to keep in mind is, do not add white to lighten a color. It will not only make the paint dull, but opaque also. If you want to make a color light, just add water. Let's come back to the process of glazing. We will paint a rosebud using the glazing technique. Draw the subject very lightly using an SB pencil. The first layer will be very diluted light color covering almost the entire area, suggesting the various features. This will be done wet on wet. Some areas which you intend to keep as brightest spots, keep the paper white to do the trick. That means you do not apply any paint over this area. This first layer will lay the roadmap for the rest of the painting. Once done, leave it for drying completely. Do not apply the next layer until unless it is absolutely dry. In the next step, we will apply the first glaze that is a layer over the existing layer. We will use a saturated tone of the same colors to mark the dark or shadow areas. The brush strokes have to be extremely light. Do not apply any pressure else the bottom layer will get disturbed. We will again allow it to dry before the next layer. In the next step, we will apply another layer to define the various features using darker tones to form the shapes. Next, we will define the shadow areas further 
then use more saturated colors for bright areas and finalize the main subject. Next choose a suitable color and paint the background. You may like to finish off the painting without the background also. Here in this painting, by painting too many leaves, I actually made a mistake in the composition. This has made the composition too cluttered. I could have just kept the bottom two leaves. It would have made the painting more neat. You may never feel as if the painting is finished. You will be tempted to keep on walking for refining it further. But I feel you should not get tempted and call it finished once you have finished the main layers. I will finish this video also here. I hope you enjoyed it. I love to hear about your comments. Please also share and subscribe amongst the people of the same interest. See you.